watching the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and now, here's your host, Data Pioneer. Good morning, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and today is Sunday, um, April the 25th. Hope everybody's doing well out there. What's on the cards today for the Linux Unix Tech Channel? Well, I thought I would... Um, Take a look at, uh, let you come with me and take a look at um, a new release of uh, BSD Unix. It's called FreeBSD 13.0 release. Uh, there is a current version, but this is the release, which means it's officially released to the public. Uh, and it has been released. Uh, if you go out to the website and take a look at the website for FreeBSD, it is at freebsd.org. And here is the announcement that says, Latest news, FreeBSD 13.0 release is available. If I click on that, it takes me out to this website here, uh, part portion of the website, which talks about the release. It was released on April the 13th. However, the build we're going to be using was uh, actually built on April 9th. But um, it says be sure to check the release notes and the release errata. Uh, I've checked the errata. There is none. Uh, before installation for any late-breaking news and or issues with 13.0. I'm going to be installing FreeBSD 13.0 release in VirtualBox 6, uh, my hypervisor of choice, and um, I haven't had any issues with it. But if I do go out to the release notes, let me do that and take a look at that. Uh, the release notes basically just tell us that uh, here's the abstract for it. Uh, talks about what it contains. Here's the introduction for the distribution itself. And it's not a distro of Linux now. It's uh, FreeBSD, Berkeley Software Development Unix. Okay. So this is Unix. Uh, and this is the Unix Linux tech channel. So I do cover Unix as well as Linux and other technology issues and, uh, and items. Um but anyway, uh, here it is, and so you can uh, look at that. I'll put a link to all of this down below in the video show notes. Uh, but let's get into it. So if I go out to here to VirtualBox 6, I'm going to go up and click on Machine and New, and I'm going to call this Free BSD 13 Release. Well, it's 13.0 Release. Okay, um, and it's going to be based on BSD. It's going to be based on the 64-bit version. Um, I did download the uh, ISO file, and I'll put a link to the download page uh, in my show notes as well. And I did download the ISO file for FreeBSD 64-bit. So let's go click Next here. I want to give this uh, 8192 megabytes, which is 8 gigs of RAM and the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to be installing FreeBSD with the TTY installer uh, and it uh, I'm going to be uh, accepting ZFS or ZFS as the file system that's the Zetabyte file system uh, and uh, the FreeBSD website uh, cautions us or warns us that if you're going to install ZFS file system with FreeBSD which is what's recommended by the way um, that you will need, uh, you can do it with 4 gigs of RAM, but it's uh, they're recommending 8 gigs or higher uh, in order to not have issues. So that's what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and click Next here. I'm going to create the virtual hard disk, uh, VDI, virtual disk space, and dynamically allocated. Select Next. I am going to give this, um, I think I'll give this uh, 32 gigs of uh, VDI space and click create. Now let's go to settings before we launch and tweak those as we always do. So I've got the, these look okay for system. I'm going to untick the floppy. I'm going to select hard disk and move that up the boot order so that when we boot up or reboot it'll boot up on the installation rather than on the CD-ROM. Don't need to do anything here. Um, I believe I will give this two processors, so I have four. And for display, I'm going to leave that alone. We'll get to that in a moment. 
or no, not display storage. Uh, let's go up and give it a full 128 because I am going to be installing a desktop environment, which is going to be GNOME 3. Uh, all right, and so let's enable 3D acceleration as well. Going to bypass storage for now. Audio is fine. Network, I am going to move away from NAT to bridged adapter. That way, the uh, bridge adapter will allow the uh, FreeBSD operating system to come up and DHCP to assign an IP address on the local area network so I can touch it if I need to and I will need, need to be able to do that. Don't need to mess with anything else here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, and so let's go ahead and start the distribution and uh, go ahead and select this and come down and select FreeBSD 13.0 release AMD 64 disk 1.iso which is what I selected I'm going to choose that start it select view full screen mode and switch one thing I did forget to do uh, I will correct that later on is I, I need to uh, bump up the uh, scaling on this because FreeBSD does not come up to 1920 by 1080 uh, on install, and uh, I'm not going to mess with uh, Linux uh, additional, you know, add-ons to VirtualBox to get this to work properly. All right, so it's booting up. Here we are at the installer. Let me go ahead and do that now. So let me go out to Settings again, and let's come to Display, and let's bump up the... Uh, Bump up the scaling to 140% off the bat here. All right. And okay, so let's click OK. Now we get back. So if I click show again, we'll be able where you can see it better on the screen. Okay. So all right, we're at the installer, and this is the FreeBSD installer at the TTY. It's kind of an in curses kind of installer. So here I'm going to go ahead and just hit the enter key. And it comes up here, the system console driver for FreeBSD defaults to standard U.S. keyboard mapping. Uh, I think that's the default setting here for uh, anybody. Uh, so I am in the U.S. If you do have a different language and a different keyboard, you'll need to come down and arrow down and select your particular language and set it up. But for me, that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key for select. Now I'm going to choose a host name for the machine. Now... Even though uh, I'm not running a managed network, with FreeBSD, if you don't give it a fully qualified do domain name for a network, even though it's a fake one, uh, FreeBSD will boot up into the single user mode, which is just a TTY uh, black screen with the login prompt. Okay, So you don't want to do that. I am going to be installing a desktop environment here, so I want it to come up to multi-user. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this free. BSD um, 13 dot local. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. All right. So here we are at the distribution selection for different options that we want to components that we want to install for our system. Uh, it's just installing the kernel debugger and the 32-bit uh, compatibility libraries by default. There's really nothing else that I need to install. I don't really want to install the base system debugging. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK here. All right, so now for the partitioning, uh, you can select Auto UFS, which is the uh, Unix file system, or manual or shell. But I want to select the Auto ZFS guided root. So I do want the ZFS file system, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and click OK. It's probing. It says here it found uh, ZFS configuration, which is I have one drive. So it's recommending a pool based on a uh, stripe okay, of one disk, which is a zero disk, but it's actually one disk. A pool name of zroot by default, and that's OK. Uh, and it's going to be a uh, GPT or the GUID partitioning table, not the master boot record. The thing that it, the reason that it chose that by default is because when you're installing ZFS, ZFS cannot or will not install on the master boot record BIOS. Has to be the uh, GUID partitioning table or GPT. All right. 
and we'll have a two gig swap here. All right, we're not going to do any encryption and we're not going to have a mirror because we only have one disk. So let's come back up to the install and do the select. And we're going to select Stripe No Redundancy. We can't have mirror because there's only one disk. Cannot obviously have a RAID because we don't have one or more disks. We don't have two or more. We just have the one. So I'm going to click OK here. All right, so we only have the one VBox hard disk, which is ADA0. I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar to select it and hit Enter. Here's our last chance. It says, are you sure you want to destroy the current contents of the following disk, ADA0? Yeah, because uh, it is a virtual hard disk. Nothing on it anyway. Not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and select Yes. And now it's going ahead and doing its install process. doesn't take very long to do this, so I'll stay with you during this installation. Uh, once we uh, complete the install, uh, then I'll move forward with uh, what we need to do next. Um, but uh, it's not a problem having you sit through this part because it's not going to take very long to do it. Once the installation is completed, then we will move on to other things that we need to do, and I will cover those in this video. But you have to be patient, and one of the things you have to do is be patient here because this entire install is going to take about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. All right, so we're now back at a TTY screen. It says, please select the password for the system management account, which is root. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And retype it. It's a mismatch. So let me do it again. Oh, that's, I don't know why I'm getting a mismatch. Let me make sure my uh, caps lock is not on. Let me try that again. All right, so I typed it that time. Just fat fingered my keyboard. Okay, so I've got the root password in. Please select the network interface to configure. There's only one interface showing right now. I don't have it set up to go to. Um, wireless and I don't really want to. I want this to be a wired connection. So it's going to be EM0 which is my uh, network connectivity for hardware at Ethernet. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It says would you like to configure IPv4 for the interface? Of course I would. Let DHCP do it. So I'm going to say yes. Would you like to use DHCP to configure this? Of course I would. That's the dynamic host configuration protocol which automatically assigns. So I'm going to hit enter. It's acquiring a DHCP lease right now and uh, assigning an IP address to my machine. And would you like to configure IPv6? No, I do not. And so I'm going to uh, toggle over to uh, either tab or right arrow over, say no, hit enter. And for search capability here, I'm going to just say free bsd.local for the DNS. Um, but I do have 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google for DNS, the server 1, and 192.168.1.1, which is my router for my second fallback DNS server. All right, so I'm going to tab down to OK and hit Enter. Now it's asking me to select a time zone. All right, I'm in the America, north and south, and I hit Enter and come down to the United States, which is near the bottom. Highlight it and click OK here. And then for me, eastern most areas is the, the right option. Go ahead and hit OK. Does the abbreviation EDT look reasonable? Yes, it does. That's the eastern daylight time, which is what I'm in right now. I'm in the New York City time zone, by the way, on the east coast of the United States. Hit yes. All right. Calendar looks good. Time looks OK. I'm going to go ahead and just skip the time. And now choose the services you'd like to be started at boot. So by default... It is going to start up a SSH uh, daemon server for Secure Shell daemon. That's okay. It's also going to start up the dump dev, which is enabling the kernel crash dumps to var crash. That's all right. And two others I'm going to select is NTP date and NTPD to synchronize my system and network time at boot time. All right. And so let's go ahead and click OK. All right, and for choosing system security, you can harden your system if you want to. 
Nothing is selected by default, and for this particular demonstration and uh, video, I'm not going to select anything here. So I'm just going ahead and bypass that and say OK here. Uh, would you like to add users to be installed in the system? Yes, I would. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. I'm going to select a username, Data Pioneer, full name, DL Callaway, UID, I'm going to leave that empty because by default it will automatically uh, select it for me. For the login groups for Data Pioneer, the Data Pioneer group would be the default. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter to select it. Now for login group is, is Data Pioneer, but would you like to invite Data Pioneer into other groups? I do. I'm going to select Wheel, the Wheel group, and Video. The reason I want to select the Wheel group is I want to give Data Pioneer root privileges or pseudo privileges. And by the way, VSD, Linux, or Unix, uh, Berkeley uh, Software Development uh, Unix, does not install sudo by default. And you don't really need it because um, we're giving... Uh, data Pioneer pseudo privileges or root privileges here by adding Data Pioneer to the wheel group. All right, I'm adding uh, Data Pioneer to the video group here because I want uh, Data Pioneer to be able to manage the GNOME desktop environment. All right, hit enter, class login, login class rather, default, hit the default. SH is the default shell, so I'm going to go ahead and enter. Home directory is home data pioneer. I'm going to go ahead and enter that. That's fine. Permissions, I'm going to leave by default. Uh, user password based authentication, yes. So I'm going to enter for default. Use empty password, no. By default, enter. Use a random password, no. By default, I'll hit enter there. I want to enter a password now for the user. Can't type today, so let me go back. And repeat it. Okay, I want to. Do I want to lock out the account after creation? No. By default, hit enter. Now it's the presenting a screen to me, asking me to take a look at this and make sure that this is what I want. Uh, I've got Data Pioneer. I've got a password installed. Full name DL Callaway. UID was automatically assigned to one zero zero one, which looks good. The groups I've assigned Data Pioneer to are the Data Pioneer group, the Wheel group, and the Video group. That's good uh, for home folder. Home data pioneer is the default home directory, and that's good. For shell, bin sh is good. Do I want to lock out the account? No. Does it look good? Yes. And I have to type in the word yes, Y-E-S, lowercase. Hit enter. Do I want to add another user? I have to type in the word no here and hit enter. All right. So I'm at the screen to exit the installer if I'm done. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I have a reason for doing this. Uh, I want to get the handbook and have it install that automatically for me so I have a copy of it in case I'm offline. And the other reason is, is it refreshes the uh, BSD, free BSD Unix repositories if I do this. And so I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. I'm going to select English as my uh, default, and it's already highlighted there in the list. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Enter and let it do its thing. All right, so it's going to go ahead and download, fetch, download the uh, handbook and install it and refresh the repos, which is what it's doing right now. Okay, I am done, and so now I do want to exit, so I'm going to go ahead, leave it on exit, and hit enter. And it says now the installation is finished, and before exiting the installer, would you like to open a shell? to make any final manual modifications. I do not at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and click No. Do I want to reboot? Yes, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot. All right, and so this is going to reboot the system and come back to a TTY with a login screen. I'll log in as standard user data pioneer, and then I'll show you how to elevate the privileges since we don't have sudo because we will need to be in elevated privileges for what uh, we're going to continue to do here because my intent is to install some packages uh, work with the fstab or the file system table and then install x.org server and also GNOME 3 desktop environment and make a couple of other changes and I'll show you that process
All right, so it's coming up now. We should get to a login screen. There we go. I'm going to type Data Pioneer, enter, and the password. And I'm logged in as Data Pioneer. Now, I need to be elevated to root privileges. And so the way to do this, I didn't log in as root directly, but I logged in as a standard user, which is normal, best practice. I'm going to do an SU, and then I'm going to follow that with a dash. And the reason for that is, and I get a password prompt screen for the prompting me for the password for root. I want to be in root's environment, not just as root, but root's environment as well. So let me log in as root. Okay, so now root at FreeBSD 13, uh, and I'm in root's environment. All right, so the next thing I need to do here is I want to install some packages. And to do that, we're going to use the package manager for BSD, which is PKG. All right, and install. If you're familiar with Ubuntu or Debian or Debian or any of the other uh, aptitude based systems for apt uh, package management, you'll notice that you have uh, apt install. Well, with BSD, you use PKG install. All right, so I want to install an editor. So I'm going to install nano because it's not on the system by default. I want also to install git. I may need that later. I want to install py73 dash, oh, sorry, dash uh, glances because I want to install glances, which is a uh, an application or utility rather that lets you monitor your system processes among other things and I'm going to install the PY70 or not 73 I'm sorry PY37 because it's a 3.7 Python that's installed on here uh, dash glances okay and I also want to install NeoFetch alright and I think that's all I want for right now let me hit the enter key and it's going to install 40 packages. I'm going to say yes. And let it do its install. This shouldn't take very long, but I will go ahead and pause the video and come back when it's finished. Okay, so the process has completed now, uh, installing those packages uh, that I uh, initially installed. The next thing I want to do is I want to get into the file system table and add an entry to that which is going to help us uh, allow us rather to launch our GNOME 3 desktop environment um, correctly and so let me do a nano since I've installed nano it should work Etsy FSTAB for file system table and I'm in there now and I want to come down to the third line and I want to type in proc hit tab and I want to do a backslash or forward slash proc and then tab again and then I want to do a proc fs hit tab and then I want to do a read write this one needs to be read writable tab again zero tab zero alright when that's completed so it's proc forward slash proc proc fs read write zero zero hit control x and save the yes hit y to save and hit enter to save the file and clear the screen so let's clean up the terminal next thing i want to do here is uh, i want to install two packages now the first one is the x.org server and so i'm going to do a pkg install xorg all right and then hit enter all right, and it's going to be 174 packages to install here. I'm going to say yes and hit enter. And uh, it's going to go out and fetch all 174 packages. And once it fetches those, it's going to then um, load them and install them. Okay, so um, that's going to take a while. And so it's going to, be going to take about five minutes. So I'll pause the video now and I'll come back when it's completed. Okay, so that process has completed now. The 174 packages have been installed for the x.org server, which is our uh, windowing manager. And uh, now the next thing we need to do, uh, it took about five minutes, by the way, and so the next thing we need to do is we need to do a PKG install of our desktop environment. And for this particular video, 
and demonstration, I'm going to install the GNOME 3 desktop environment. Okay, so I'm just going to put in PKG install GNOME 3, hit enter. And it says that we're going to install 420 packages. It's a fairly, fairly large uh, package uh, to install or desktop environment. It has 420 packages associated with it. Hit oh, yes here and let it start up. Now, this is going to do the same kind of thing that it did for x.org server. It's going to go out and fetch all 420 packages. Then it's going to uh, install those. And so this process will take a little bit longer uh, than the previous, a little bit longer than five minutes. It may take about 10 minutes. And so I will pause the video here and come back when it's finished. Okay, so it's been about uh, 10 minutes, roughly, uh, as I anticipated, and the uh, GNOME 3 desktop environment now is installed, and it says, congratulations, GNOME 3 has been successfully installed on your system, and we're ready to proceed with now the final step uh, in this process. And by the way, I'm not making these pr steps up. Uh, this is covered fully in the documentation on the main homepage here for freebsd.org under documentation. Um, I am shortcutting a few things, but uh, this process hopefully will work just fine. But one of the final things I need to do now is uh, fire up the editor again and edit a file called rc.conf under Etsy. And so let's do a nano uh, Etsy rc.conf. That's the rc.conf file. And here it is. And this particular file is uh, designed to start up different services at boot up and you can see that these uh, the ones that are already there ZFS for instance is enabled at boot up uh, NTP date and NTPD are enabled SSHD is enabled um, it, it gives the host name and IP or IF config rather for EM0 as DHCP which means that the DHCP server will be uh, utilized in initiating the IP address, the IPv4 address for our system. And uh, we'll take a look at that when we get in. All right, so there are four lines I need to add here. So I'm going to go ahead and type them, and then we'll talk about them briefly before we move on. So the first one is dbus enable uh, equals, and yes, and it has to be in all caps. All right. The next line is GDM enable and equals YES for yes, not no. GNOME underscore enable equals YES for yes. And finally, HALD underscore enable is equal to yes. All right, so what are those four lines? Dbus enable means we want to enable the Dbus on reboot or on boot up every time. And one of the things that allows the Dbus to be enabled that we did earlier was the uh, monitoring or not monitoring, but modification rather of the, the uh, Etsy FSTAB or file system table. Adding proc and forward slash proc and proc FS and read write zero zero. So that enables the dbus. And so here we need to say, do it. So enable dbus, yes. Next thing is gdm enable, and that's the GNOME display uh, manager. All right, has to be enabled. What is that? GNOME display manager is the login screen. So we want the login screen to come up. So we have the gdm enable, yes. GNOME enable, yes, means we want to launch the GNOME desktop environment on boot up, and that's the start x. All right, for so the X11 uh, window manager or windowing manager. And then finally, the HALD enable, that's the hardware abstraction layer daemon, and that is utilized to monitor our devices. And so we want the HALD or the hardware abstraction layer daemon to be enabled at boot up as well. So we're done. So let's hit Control X and say yes and close the file, clear the screen to clean up the terminal. And so if we did everything right, we should be able to reboot at this point. We should be able to come up to a login screen. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's do a reboot. We are logged in as root, so or not root, but we have root privileges. So we should be able to do that. Hit reboot, and let's reboot the system. And 
let's hopefully get to a login screen. All right, so it's uh, syncing the disks now and rebooting the system. Now you're going to get a login prompt initially. Don't touch the keyboard after that happens because uh, it will bypass that hopefully and go to the login screen. Only takes about three seconds to do that. A lot of people want to jump in and start logging in, but you, if you do that, it will take you to a TTY. There's the login, and here we come with the login screen. So that's good. Good news. Here we are. All right, so here's the login screen that we were looking for. And uh, so let's go ahead and click on DL Callaway. Put in the password. May have mistyped it. Nope, I got it right. Okay. And we should be logging in to the desktop. Now, this isn't full 1920 by 1080, as I said, but that's okay. If you install this on bare metal, you won't have a problem with it filling up the, the monitor uh, real estate. But here with the virtual box, uh, it has an issue. I don't want to mess with the display. Because if I do a right-click and do Display Settings, you're going to see that uh, when it comes up, and this is the GNOME 3 desktop, we have the 1024 by 768 but we don't have 1920 by 1080 and I would have to mess with it to get it to come up, and I just don't want to mess with it. So that's why I did a 140% scaling. Now, one of the things I do want to change here is I do want to change the background, so I'm going to go ahead and right-click and say Change Background. Now you do have a fair selection of things that you can choose from here, uh, but one of the things I want to choose, I think I want to select that one. And so I'll select that one and then close the screen. And now we're at the desktop. So just pretend this is filling up the entire screen, uh, even though it's not. All right, so let's look across the top. First thing we have is activities, and then we have a calendar. So if we click that, we have no notifications. We have a calendar. We can add world clocks, and then we can add a weather. We want to do that as well. Uh, so if I do a click on weather location, and uh, it automatically found Asheville for me, which is nice. That is my hometown. That's where I'm at. It says it's 15 degrees centigrade, uh, scattered clouds, and I can click on today or tomorrow's forecast. But let me go ahead and close that and move on. To so the right-hand side, you've got another screen which gives you your audio settings, your regular settings. You've got locking the screen here and power off and restarting the system as well. All right, so if we come back to uh, the desktop, if you right-click on the desktop, you can do Change Background, Display Settings, or Settings. Let's come up to Activities and select that. And so you have a panel on the left. We have a web, so let's click that for Web Browser. And that is the, the web um, browser by default here in BSD. And so let me go out to my favorite uh, website, which is my my particular website, which is Data Pioneer. Uh, let me actually I need to put in HTTP. It's a secure site. Data Pioneer dash network dot org. My favorite website in the world, and it should pull it up. And uh, it does. Looks like it's coming up. Here we are. Here's my website and. Uh, Take a look at that. I'll put a link to this out in the uh, uh, show notes as well. All right, so um, oh, I lost it. Okay, so why did I lose it? Um, hmm. Let me, let me quit that. Get back in it again. I don't know why it lost it. I think I uh, scrolled the uh, mouse too fast. And uh, here we go. All right, so... All right, so I was in the page, and so if I come up to DP Network again, if I go up to blog, here's my blog itself, where all my articles are. The last article is an article called Installing FreeSB, FreeBSD 13.0 Release with the GNOME 3 Desktop and GNOME Display Manager. Here is the article itself. If you click on the article, I'll put a link to this as well in the show notes. You can read 
everything that we're doing here is covered in my blog. And so let's go ahead and close that. Um, if you do a help, though, first about web, you can see that this is the web, web browser 3.38.2. All right. And so let's close that. Let's come back to activities again. Come down here. This is the calendar. This is the photos. And this is the file manager. And so if you select that, it's empty right now. And uh, we can add a folder. We can do a test folder and do create. So we've got a test folder here. If I go over here to about files, this is the files file manager in, remember this is not a Linux distro, even though this is a GNOME 3 desktop. This is uh, FreeBSD Unix. And so it is files 3.36.3 stable. Click that link, you'll go out to their website. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. Let's come back to activities and go down to the show applications. And we do have a host of applications. I'll run through these quickly. We've got several pages here. You've got 2048, uh, Accessorizer, I'll Riot software. Um, we've got uh, some others here. I'm going to go into Brazero, Calculator, Calendar. Uh, we've got cheese, chess, clocks, configuration, contacts, deconfiguration editor. I have a dictionary. We've got disk usage. If I select that and then select computer, it will come up and generate a graphic of the entire uh, computer utilization here for the hard drive, which is a VBox a VDI disk. There we go. So it shows you here everything that's uh, been installed. All right, so let's go back out and let's uh, close this and get back in again and go down and show applications. And so let's go to the next page. And so we've got uh, Documents Evolution. We don't have any Office Suite installed, but we could install LibreOffice if we wanted. We've got extensions. Uh, we've got some more games, fonts, Glade. We've got um, Image Viewer. We've got Mahjong, another game. We've got Maps, Mines, Nibbles, and more games, Password Manager. Uh, third page, we've got Photos. We've got Power Station for power management. Uh, we've got more games here. We've got Screenshot. We've got Settings, Sudoku, and we've got um, System Monitor. So we've got System Monitor there for monitoring our resources, processes, and resources here and file system itself. Okay, we've got ZFS, remember? All right, so let's get back in, go back to show applications and go down to the third screen. We've got a to-do list, we've got a text editor, we've got a terminal. So I'll select terminal. I don't like the way this terminal is set up, so I'm going to go ahead and put select preferences here. I'm going to create a profile and I'm going to call it Data Pioneer and create that. I'm going to select um, 90, I think 90 columns, and I think I will select 30 because I've got this elevated to 140% scale. Uh, for colors, I'm going to select, uh, take off the default and select a solarized light, or no, solarized dark, okay? And then uh, by default, it should uh, come back up to it when I close it and reopen it. And so this time when I open it, I'm going to come up to the third screen. I'm going to right click here and say add to favorites. So it's on the favorites list. So let's select it. And uh, it didn't seem to save the settings here. Let's, let me come back in and see why uh, that did not happen. Uh, it should say use by default. Ah, I know why. Set as default. So I didn't set it as default. And so let's close that. Close the terminal again. Now this time I should be able to get it from the favorites list. And here we go. All right. So let's do a uname. A, and it shows that we are running FreeBSD 13.0 release. And it was released on Friday, April 9th, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, at 42409 UTC 2121, okay? And uh, let's see if we got any, uh, can update the system, PKG update. Should be updated already. 
insufficient privileges. Yeah, let me, let me update my privileges here to root. And let's try it again, pkg update. And it says that we're up to date, all right? So if we do a um, dfkh, uh, you can see how the uh, thing is set up for our system. Uh, we've got uh, ZFS and uh, everything is set up here. It looks normal, all right? Let me clear the screen to clean the terminal up. If I do a um, ZFS list, you can see that we have, this shows the, the setup for ZFS. And if I do a zpool, um, oops, clear the screen. And if I do a, um, oh, I'm not going to worry about it. ZFS is installed. We know that. All right, so is HTOP installed? HTOP is not found. And so I can do a package pkg install HTOP. I didn't install HTOP. I did install glances. I'm going to go ahead and proceed and install that. It is installed now. Let's clear the screen, clean up the terminal, run HTOP again. And so here we have HTOP. Uh, we're running 1.54 gigs out of 8 gigs. It's a little high, but uh, we'd need to reboot the system and come up uh, to a, a freshly rebooted system. should be around 750, 800 megs, not 1.54 gigabytes. Got 85 tasks. We've got zero threads, two running. Load averages look good, 0 0.49, 0 0.85, 0 0.63. We've been up for 11 minutes and 9 or 10 seconds. We have uh, two gigs of swap, but no swap being utilized at the moment. Let's close HTOP. And uh, if I expand the terminal a little bit, and let me go ahead and close HTOP. Clear the screen. Let's run Glances, because I did install Glances, and here's Glances. Glances is a little bit different if you're not familiar with it. Uh, this is what Glances looks like. There is a web interface to this as well, so you can take and install or uh, access Glances on this system from any web browser on the network. So I could go to another Linux machine or a Windows machine. I could, uh, if the web interface was installed in Glances, uh, and I could pull up the screen as well and monitor and manage um, my system from the web browser. All right. So let's go ahead and close that. Clear the screen. Get out of the terminal. And let's exit root privileges and get back to where we were. And let's go down to the th here to the third screen. And so with the terminal, we've got the text editor. Um, not sure which text editor that is. It looks like it is. Can't tell. It's called gedit. Okay, so it's gedit 3.38.1. All right. Let's close it. I'm partial to LeafPad, but uh, I would install LeafPad on here. All right, let's go down to the fourth window. And um, fourth window, we are now almost finished. We've got tweaks. We can tweak our system. Videos, weather, web, and Xterm. Okay, and so this is on the all. If you want to do frequent, you can click on the frequent, and these are the ones that we've been opening. And so that's what that looks like. All right, and so let's get out of this altogether now. Click on activities and get out of it. If you right click and do settings, we can get into the settings, and we have quite a few things to look at, but I'm not going to go through this, this in any great detail. We've got notifications, we've got search. Get applications, um, and there they are. We have privacy settings we can set for microphone, file history, and trash. We've got online accounts that we can set up. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And uh, so we can go down to sharing. We can go down to sound and power. So we'll blank the screen in five minutes. I can change that to never, which is what I normally do for display we looked at already. Mouse and touchpad, we've got keyboard shortcuts, printers. I don't think it found any printers, and that's to be expected. I would probably have to install cups here to get my printer installed. Um, and uh, let's see, removable media, color, region and language, accessibility, users. So we do have DL Callaway. There's the password. We've got logged in currently. We'd have to unlock if we want to change anything. Default applications, here they are for web, mail, calendar, music, 
video and photos, date and time, and about. Okay, so we're running um, 8 gigs of RAM. This is a Core i3 7100 CPU, 3.9 gigahertz dual core, um, running uh, LLVM pipe graphics, 35 gigabyte capacity disk, 34.4 being reported. FreeBSD 13.0 release, 64-bit GNOME version 3.38.2 because we installed GNOME 3. And then we have the X11 windowing system here. Okay, so let's close that. All right, so this has been a quick uh, show, uh, sh you know, video for demonstrating how to install the um, uh, FreeBSD 13.0 release, which just came out on April 13. So it hasn't been out very long. Encourage you highly to go up and uh, to the freebsd.org website. I'll put a link down below. Uh, go out and install the ISO file that I installed that I showed you in my video. And uh, install it the way I did. Follow my directions. You may have to stop the video and restart it from time to time. It should take you to a successful install of GNOME 3. Now, you can install more than GNOME. You can do KDE, MATE. You can do... LXDE, uh, XFCE, but I chose GNOME 3 because um, I like GNOME, even though it is a little heavy. Um, but uh, and then I showed you here how to uh, install the extra bits that need to you'll need to do to get it up and running, and then showed you a quick run through on uh, the desktop itself. And so, if you like this video, please uh, hit the up arrow or the like to uh, like my video. It will help my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the bell to subscribe and to get notified every time I upload a video. And so this concludes the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Take care. See you later. Bye-bye.